this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. to me I'm gonna let it shine Jesus gave it to me I'm gonna let it shine Jesus gave it to me I'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine good morning we thank all of you for joining us here at our chapel in St. Paul Monastery and joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio. Today is the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. It is also World Marriage Day. And as we come together, we come together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us pause and reflect upon our relationship with God and ask him for his mercy, love, and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, highest. and on Amen. earth peace, peace to, to people, people of goodwill. Good we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, share your bread with the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless, clothed and naked when you see them, and do not turn your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall quickly be healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry, 
and satisfy the afflicted. Then light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the just man is a light in darkness to the upright. The just man is a light in darkness to the upright. Light shines through the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Well for the man who is gracious and lends who conducts his affairs with justice. The just man is a light in darkness to the upright. He shall never be moved. The just one shall be in everlasting remembrance an evil report he shall not fear his heart is firm trusting in the lord the just man is a light in darkness to the upright his heart is steadfast he shall not fear lavishly he gives to the poor his justice shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. The just man is a light in darkness to the upright. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God. I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom, for I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of spirit and power so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others 
that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just one announcement before we begin our reflection this morning, just a reminder that we are having our day of recollection on February 29th, the last Sunday of this month. Information is on the table in the back. As I mentioned, today is the World Marriage Day. This was designated by St. John Paul II at the request of the World Marriage Encounter Movement. And so it's always the second Sunday in February. So we'll be reflecting upon marriage this morning and we will have a special blessing for all of you who are married here in just a few moments. In today's gospel, we are asked to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth, which means that we as the people of God, we as the church are to use our lives to give a new perspective on how we live in our world, to give a new spirituality, a new viewpoint, look at things through the eyes of Jesus Christ. So we give them a new enlightenment, we give them a new taste, a new seasoning on how the world is to be lived. <clears throat> and the church tells us one of the basic ways we do that is through our families. And families that have good, strong marriages and then have strong, strong families are able to be what we might call in the church the domestic church. And therefore, we use our lives in order to further the gospel message and the teaching of the church. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church gives us three things that we need to reflect upon and we need to establish ourselves as families. First of all, it says we need to be a family of love. So the love that we see between the husband and the wife, the parents, are to be seen in sharing that love with their children and their grandchildren. Have a witness of how they care for one another, to show the affection that they have, and to show the affection they have for their children and grandchildren, even though there may be differences, maybe they uh, come at a different viewpoints, that they are there to always show their unconditional love. And if the family can experience the love, then it comes out from that family and goes elsewhere. So to our neighbors and to our extended family, to our classmates, to our coworkers, to people that we encounter all the time, it comes because of how we are sharing the family values that we have learned. And so we need to instill good family values with our children, with our grandchildren, witnessing that we are a family of love. The second thing we are asked to do is to be a family of forgiveness. So even though we have love for one another, at times we argue, at times we fight, at times we don't see the same way, at times we don't get along. And so we need to at times to come forward and say, hey, I'm sorry for my action, for my words. Please forgive me. And then we need to learn to extend that forgiveness and to accept that sorrow. Because if we can show that within the family again, it extends out to others. Can we say I'm sorry to my neighbors? Can we say I'm sorry to my coworkers? Can I say I'm sorry to my classmates? Can we say please forgive me? Can we extend forgiveness to the others who have wronged us? And if we are instilled within our family values of learning how to forgive, extension of that love we already have, then that's a way that we can show that to others as well. And finally, the Catechism asks us to be a family of prayer. So we need to show that we are people of prayer. So we need to come together as a family. So pray before and after meals. Pray before you go to bed at night. Teach your children how to pray the Our Father, the Glory Be, the Hail Mary, and other essential prayers that are very important to you and your family. Bring them to the sacraments. Bring them to Mass so they can experience what is going on in our church. Pray the rosary with them, buy them a rosary, teach them the mysteries, teach them how to pray, and bring, come together as a family of prayer. And also then maybe give them the Bible, especially when they're younger, give them the story Bible, give them the picture Bible, so they can begin to get those stories that they're going to hear proclaimed at mass, they'll begin to understand, so then when they really get a full Bible and they can read it, they'll have a better understanding. But perhaps more importantly, we make to make Sunday a family day once again. Come together as a family in prayer and to the church. 
Have a meal together. If you go out, that's fine. If you can prepare it together, that's fine. Now, I grew up in the ancient days of the 1960s, and we didn't have anything that was open on a Sunday, so we played games as a family. We talked to family. Maybe we went out to a movie together. Maybe we took a Sunday drive out to a park or someplace because it was a way that would brought us together as a family. So maybe we need to unite and make Sunday a family day again. It may mean now that we do go to sports. It may mean that that's an activity they do, but the challenge we have to give is we have to tell those athletic organizations don't have a, a, a game in the Sunday morning and don't have practice on Sunday morning so that we can come together and pray. And if we do that, if we are a people of a family of prayer, a family of love, a family of reconciliation, then we truly are the light of the world and the salt of the earth and sharing the gospel message with everyone. Now I'm going to offer a special blessing for all of you who are married. And so I'm going to ask all of you who are married to please stand. And if your spouse is here, great. If your spouse is not here, that's fine. You can still stand and get the marriage. If they have passed on, we will remember them in our thoughts and prayers. If they are just not here for whatever reason, you can take the blessing home with you. And in this way, um, we want to honor all of you on this World Marriage Day. Almighty and eternal God, you have so exalted the unbreakable bond of marriage that has become the sacramental sign of your son's union with the church as his spouse. Look with favor on all those whom you have united in marriage as they ask for your help and the protection of the Virgin Mary. They pray that in good times and in bad, they will grow in love for each other and that they will resolve to be of one heart in the bond of peace. Lord, in their struggles, let them rejoice that you are near to help them and in their needs, let them know that you are there to rescue them. And in their joys, let them see that you are the source and completion of every happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us all now stand and share our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Calling to mind our needs and the needs of all our brothers and sisters, we turn now to God, source of light and goodness. For the church, that we may be a light to our world and that our words and deeds may be instruments of healing and transformation for our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who reach out to the poor and those in need, that they may see the face of Christ in those whom they serve and never grow weary in offering love and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, 
that they continue to search for ways to heal ancient wounds and find ways of promoting peace and justice for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the sick, the homebound, and those recovering from surgery, that God will bring healing and renewal to them in body, mind, and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as we pray this Mass, let us remember Ralph Pisa. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And on this World Marriage Day, let us be thankful to all marriages and that the blessing of the Lord will come upon all our married couples, that they will be a strong witness of the presence of God in the life and in the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we strive to spread your light and goodness in our community and in our world. May our hands extend your grace to meet the needs of your people as you listen to the prayers we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are they who are poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of God. Bless us, O Lord, make us poor in spirit, bless us, O Lord, our God. We are the light of the world, may our light shine before. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and for every praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, for as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us turn it offer to each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I thank our musicians, our readers, all of you, and all those joining us over our ecumenical channel here in Northeast Ohio for being with us today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. can hold, but as for me and my house,